uh, website, you can access these you know, so that uh, for any uh, exams that we will be making in the near in the future. So with regards to this topic, dito po, uh, didi ka mo mag, uh, pwede ka mo didi mag log in, no? Sige. Um, who knows our current Department of Health Secretary? Dr. Bargamento, are you here? Yes, Doc. Sige. Pino tatan niya na Secretary of Health? Si Duque. Yes. Who's Duque? Ano yung Duque? Emmanuel Duque po. Doc, Dr. Emmanuel Duque. Francisco. Oh, ah, Francisco nga yan. Yan bago na ngayon, sorry. <laughs> Pare ka pasab ka. Pagbago niya niya po. Alita. Our current Department of Health Secretary is Dr. Francisco Duque III, no? Actually, second term na ni, uh, this is her second, his, his second uh, term as a Department of Health Secretary because his first term was last 20, 2005 to 2010. Okay. And then uh, five years he na inihiya. And then uh, right now, he was appointed by our President Rodrigo Duterte as the Department of Health Secretary from 2017 up to the present. So later on, we would be discussing about... Anyway, Sigil, let's discuss about uh, the previous Department of Health Secretaries. Okay? So before our current uh, DOH Secretary right now, we had... Um, the officer in charge of the Department of Health, we have Dr. Pauline Jean B. Rosel Ubial. Okay. Uh, Dr. Rosel Ubial uh, just served the public office, has served the public office for 27 years, no, and has been under 13 health secretaries. So uh, he was she was in the in the public health for quite some, some time already, no. But he was only appointed as an officer in charge, the uh, uh, Secretary of Health, from July 1, 2016 to October 2017. Yeah. The commission and appointment did not approve her, um, her appointment as the Department of Health Secretary, just like uh, what, the, what they did to uh, Gina Lopez. Do you know Gina Lopez? Hino na kilala kan Gina Lopez and book uh, on ABS-CBN, di ba? She was the DNR secretary but an OIC only but uh, she was appointed by Rodrigo Duterte. But then the commission on appointment declined and uh, did not conform to her appointment. So what I hear maging uh, legit ng department of uh, DNR secretary. So this this is what happened also to Dr. Obiad. No? So he she was just in uh, an officer in charge from July 1, 2016 to October 2017. Okay. Then Dr. Rosel Obial, amongst the amongst the Department of Health Secretaries, I think she was she is the one who has been in public health for so long. No? So 27 years and has been he ha, she has been under 13 secretaries okay so if you would like to see his her uh, biography or her, her achievements you could log into this um, website okay so uh, she literally rose from the ranks starting from volunteer health worker in Kidapawan up to the position of assistant secretary and deputy head for the Office of Health Regulations. Her vast experience in the country's health conditions have led her to be a leader and champion of Kalusugang Pangkalahatan. Okay? Uh, so, Dr. Obial was known for the Kalusugang Pangkalahatan, okay? For the, what we know as the universal health care. Okay? She, advoca she advocates on mental health, women and children's health, and tobacco control, among others. Okay? 
Her extensive career in the Department of Health has led her to numerous notable designations, such as the founding program manager of the Centrong Sigla Movement, the Quality Assurance Program of the DOH, and the founding manager of the Women's Health and Development Program of the DOH. So with her expertise in women's health, she was also named as the DOH Gender and Development Focal Person. Okay. So she was born on June 29, 1962 in Iloilo City, and uh, she is 54 years old. Yeah. She graduated her um, Doctor of Medicine at the University of the Ram Ramon Magsaysay, okay, UERMMMC, and then had her PGI ship in PGH and Masters in Public Health at the University of the, Pop uh, of, of the Philippines, Manila. Okay. So she was appointed as Assistant Secretary of Health last 2008 to 2016. So um, when you are in the government service, um, the under secretaries and the assistant secretaries and the secretaries are appointed by the president. Okay, so this is not big. Dirini, it, it pagiging assistant secretary or undersecretary is not because of uh, gin applyan mo, no? And uh, you were chosen amongst the others, but you are appointed by the secretary. If you are chosen by the secretary to become a assistant secretary or an undersecretary, then you will be appointed as that. And then also as the secretary. Okay? So, yun. So, amoy na niya work experience so 27 years in public health service is not that is not is very extensive you know? so in 1988 she started in 1988 as a rural health practice volunteer you know, in Kedapawa, north cotabato or what we uh, call now right now as rural health physician okay and then he became a medical specialist one at the duh uh region 12 in Cotabato City and then became an assistant city health officer and then after that she applied in at the DOH Manila and was the head of the polio eradication unit at the DOH Manila and then yun, several after years now damon yung mga achievements and uh, up to becoming the assistant secretary of health and to the OIC secretary of health Okay, now let's go to the next. Uh, this is from present, no? Tikatoha ubus, yeah, secretaries, no? We have Dr. Jeanette P. Loreto Garin. Jeanette P. Loreto Garin is also from our region, no? She is a relative of the Loretos, the, our, our current uh, vice governor of Leyte. So, and currently, he is a, a congressman, okay, a legislator. So, during the time of Janet Loreto Garin... Bukito ni Carlo Day. Apo. Ah, okay, bukito. So, during the time of Janet P. Loreto Garin, no? Uh, and iyo, ito yung hini maaalala is during her time was the dengue vaccine okay. so before becoming a before becoming a secretary of health she was a legislator for nine years now she uh passed the magna carta for women cheaper medicines law and the responsible parenthood and reproductive health law among many others now, she was a former she was also a, a, a medical technologist now, and then she proceeded with her medicine and also had her residency on obstetrics and gynecology. But her passion for public health, specifically that of women and children, led her to master's to her master's degree in business administration focused on healthcare systems. Okay. So um, always remember that with uh, Secretary Garin. No, Magna Carta for Women, Cheaper Medicines Law, and the Responsible Parenthood and Reproductive Health Law, among many others. So, 
See, she also is a champion of reproductive rights of Filipinos. She was chosen as one of the top 100 inspiring people of the world by Women Deliver in 2011. Okay, so this was this is her educational background. So she finished her Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology at the Divine Word University in Tacloban City, last 1993, as the cum laude. Okay, and then proceeded at Iloilo Doctors College of Medicine for her Doctor of Medicine. Okay. So currently she is a congressman, congresswoman in, in Iloilo. Next is Dr. Enrique T. Ona. Okay. So Dr. Enrique T. Uh, Ona served as our Department of Health Secretary from June 2010 to December 2014. Okay. When President Benigno Aquino III picked him as his Secretary of Health. Okay. So she he is from the from Pagadi and City Sambuanga del Sur, and also was a son of the first provincial health officer of Zabuanga del Sur, no? and a periculture nurse. No? Before being appointed by Benigno Aquino III to the health secretary post, Ona was the executive director of the National Kitty and Transport, Transport Institute, or the NKTI. And the, they, this is the post he held for 11 years and ha has been the president of the Transplantation Society of the Philippines since 1989. So. He also holds a medical license in the state of Massachusetts, USA. Okay. So, Dr. Ona is remembered for her, uh, for his, I mean, for his, um, I don't know, I mean, Kalusugang Pangkalahatan also, or the universal health care for Filipinos. So uh, he, she, he is also one of the respondents or for the uh, no, excellent, uh, His Excellency President Benigno Aquino no, with the Pakalusugan Pangkalahatan or the universal health care exemplary performance as a leader in the secretary, as the Secretary of Health. No. He also passed um, landmark health reforms like the Tobacco and Alcohol Excise Tax Reform Act of 2012. So the reason why our, our cigarettes right now are mahal, you know, and the reason why also those uh, cigarette packages have those um, package na may adam mga uh, pictures in mga sakit na pwede mo makuha from this, uh, from cigarette smoking, is from also is from Dr. Ona's uh, administration as the Department of Health Secretary. Okay. And he also championed the Responsible Parenthood and Reproductive Health Act of 2012. Okay. Now, before Dr. Ona, we have Dr. Esperanza Cabral. I, I know everyone does not, is not, Mas, mas familiar kamohan mga nauna, no? like Duque, uh, Ubial, Garin, Ona. And uh, with Dr. Cabral, no? um, medyo diri la kita iya familiar because during her time, no? uh, very short term lang, no? from January 2010 to June 2010 lang. So just roughly six months. <laughs> Uh, but uh, this was because uh, Secretary Francisco Duque III no, uh, resigned from the post. No? And then Dr. Cabral um, was the one who was appointed. Okay, so Amatono, currently our, our Secretary of Health is Dr. Duque. Then before her, before him is Ubial, and then Garin, and then Ona, and then Dr. Cabral. And then Duque, uh, Duque again, just what I mentioned kanina, no? uh, Secretary Duque was a, ha, is a two-termer already. So and your first term was in June 20, 2005 to January 2010. No? And then Dr. Cabral was then 
appointed until June 2010 only. Okay. Now, before again, uh, Duque, uh, Francisco Duque III, we have our uh, Dr. Manuel, Manuel Dairit. Now, Dr. Manuel, Manuel Dairit currently is the president of the um, APMC, Association of the Philippine Medical Colleges in the Philippines. No? So, Secretary Manuel Dairit has a public health period that spans also 27 years. And he is, he is currently the Dean of the College of Medicine and Public Health at the Ateneo de Manila Univer University. Yeah. So he has become one of the country's public health leaders given the breadth and depth of his experience in the community, academe and research, government, private sector, international health. She was a, he was appointed as Secretary of Health on February 1921, 2001 by President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. And he has led the Department of Health and its partners to new heights of public service. Okay. He was involved in, in his works for AIDS, for cholera and red tide. Yeah. And uh, he, wa he was also uh, trained as a field epidemiologist, a disease control program, public information and health advocacy, and for the regulation of the blood banks and clinical laboratories. Yeah. So remember, uh, right now, uh, we have our we have our um, law on the blood lettings or our blood donation program, diba? So as you could, uh, um, uh, kung niyo, you know, in every RHU there is a blood letting program almost uh, every six months. No? So Secretary Manuel Dairit was the one who initiated this and. Uh, he was also the one who regulated blood banks you know, in every medical, uh, in every regional medical centers. Okay. Now we go to Dr. Alberto Romualdez. Dr. Alberto Romualdez was appointed by President Joseph Ejercito Estrada. Now, he was coined as the new hero of the Department of Health employees because they were waiting for the for for him to save from the disgrace during that time because uh, prior to him uh, there was a there was a chaos on on in the Department of Health with the previous secretary. Okay, so he started as a medical advisor to the Minister of Health from 1979 to 1982. And he then became the director of the Research Institute for Tropical Medicine from 1981 to 1984. Okay. He was remembered by the Department of Health as the one who initiated or introduced to the DOH employees uh, the uh, no, uh, Western Pacific Region Hankanan World Health Organization and he he introduced it as the development of the Human Resource of Health and the Director of Health Services. He was the one who initiated the Human Resources for Health or the HRH. Okay? And iyon nakikita yan na nga, nag evolve na, no? Nga mga NDPs, if you could remember those NDP, if you have friends who are working at the Department of Health as NDPs, no? He, Dr. Alberto Romualdez, was the one who initiated this. And uh, damo damo uh, damo nga mga evolution na nahinabo up to the NDPs that we have right now. Okay, among his priority concerns on his first few weeks were to improve the efficiency in the use of resources away from graft issues, to improve access to health services, especially to those underserved for reasons of geography or economy. That's why she, he initiated with the NDPs, no? or the Hanuna, uh, it was NARS and N A R S, no, the NARS program, and to review the strengths and weaknesses of the DOH organizational structure within the framework of devolution as mandated by the local government code. Okay. Uh, yun. So his term was from September 1998 to January 2001. Now, before uh, Romualdez, Dr. Secretary Romualdez, there, he, there was a secretary named Dr. Felipe, Felipe Estrella. So during that 
uh, his time also did to medyo um, magulo and DOH no uh, her, his term was only from July 1 1998 to August 23 1998 so medyo very short no aniya no very short aniya term no but nevertheless he was um, during his term, that's the time that the Philippine General Hospital was cited as one of the 33 centers of excellence in government service by the Senate Civil Service Committee. Na he, na anag chair was Senator Blas Ople. Okay, he was given an award, the 1997 Go Award Professional Sa Medicina from the UP Manila Alumni Association, and the 1992 Presidential or Lingkod Bayan Award. He is an OB gynecologist. Now, we have Dr. Carmen Sita Reyudica. Okay. Dr. Carmen Sita Reyudica began her public health career uh, 32 years before he became uh, before she became a secretary of health. But during her time. There was difficulty of being a Secretary of Health because of the turbulent times in the DOH history. Now, if you could see, you know, the motto and mga um, unexpected na mga investigations regarding financial transactions. So, damo ang mga nag-resign, damo ang na-suspend na mga top DOH officials. No? So, the DOH public credibility and internal morale were at their lo lowest during her time, no? instinctively or perhaps with shrewd calculation. <clears throat> so during the people power reorganization, uh, her term, Dr. Carmen Sita Riodica's term was from March 1996 to June 1998. No? So as the Secretary of Health, uh, Secretary Riodica moved the DOH actively towards a people-based in contrast to the disease or program-based approach to public health. And una, no? So keeping the life cycle in mind, she focuses program on specific target age and sectoral groups such as very young children, adolescents, and women. And up till now, we have these programs. No? This approach more readily lends itself to integration of services from the point of view of the largest clients and not of the provider of services. So her ultimate vision, remember, is to have a healthy and productive individuals and family. And uh, during her term, she initiated early childhood development, a multi-agency collaboration with the DSWD and the Depth Ed. Uh, during that time, it was still DEX, or the Department of Education, Culture and Sports. He also was the one who initiated the Adolescent Health Program, the Missile Elimination Campaign, the Integrated Management of Childhood Illnesses, or our what we call IMCI, you know, uh, for those nurses who are uh, nurses, nga diana, di ba? we have our IMCI. So it came from Dr. Carmen Sita Riodica. Okay? And also various approaches like the lactation amenorrhea method in the reproductive health, syndromic approach to STD and AIDS, and the quality assurance system for programs and the life cycle planning. So, also with Dr. Carmen Sita Riudica started the internal audit or the quality assurance system. No? So, every quarter, uh, audit internal, if your programs were are really effective or not. We go to uh, the Secretary of Health from July 1995 to March 1996. This is Dr. Hilarion Ramiro. Now, Dr. Hilarion Ramiro, before becoming, be becoming a, a Secretary of Health, was the former Regional Health Director for Region 10. You know? And uh, he was also the Congressman of Misamis Occidental before his appointment as Secretary of Health. Now, Because of the People Powers reorganization in 1986, he was removed as a, as the director as the original director of Region 10. So, his appointment as 
as the Secretary of Health was a vindication no na he, he he was he is still a good doctor no for uh, uh even though or in despite na natanggal he as director of health no for the region 10 okay but uh secretary ramiro was able to establish communication with catholic groups through the catholic bishop conference in, in the philippines not only concerning the controversial tetanus toxoid vaccine but also the other population and family planning issues. Because there was a problem with the uh, priests or the Catholic uh, Church of the um, family program, um, and at on family planning, no, a program. So he was able to establish communication with the priests or with the Catholic Church. No? But she, uh, uh, after just a year, no, shortly, what if mag one year, he resigned because of controversies regarding financial transactions. Now we go to Dr. Jaime Galvestan. I think you know Dr. Jaime Galvestan because he is an author of so many medical books. So Dr. Jaime Galvestan had uh, fo the following expertise, no? He had a solid grassroots community work in far-flung doctor, doctorless rural areas. No? And then after becoming a doctor in the uh, doctor in the rural uh, in the rural health areas, he also had an opportunity to work at the National International Health Planning and Planning Program. No? And he also became a faculty of the Colleges of Medicine and Health Sciences in uh, the University of the Philippines. He had also practiced in North American European medicine with Asian and Filipino traditional medicine. So also, may uh, ni Dr. Jaime Galvestan mga books about um, traditional Filipino medicine, no? the use of our herbal medicines. No, so he yagihap he yagini gihapot may the mga books with, with regards to this. No, so yun. Dr. Galvestan is co-writer of four books. No. In our health, our lives, a guide for community health workers, fruits and vegetables with medicinal properties, just what I've told you, Kanina, and also a book about Hilo, the Filipino traditional massage, and community managed maternal and newborn care. So, if you could see you now with the books that he is writing, an iya uh, makikita talaga naton, an iya combination, an iya iba ibang expertise no? from the community to the clinical no to our uh, traditional medicine okay so he was only a secretary of health from january 1995 to june 1995 roughly just six months okay the next is i think everyone knows about him dr juan flavier perhaps he is the most popular secretary of health because if you could remember, he and Hamubo, the Secretary of Health, but very, very active, the Secretary of Health. No, he was the one. Uh, he was the Secretary of Health when we eradicated polio in the country. Okay, so yun. He was also the um, advocate for mass immunization and micronutrient implementation campaign that marked his administration. No, if you could see han mga bata pa kita may nakita ha ato mga chichiriya nakikita ni yon sentrong sigla Hello May din yon nakikita din ha ato mga chichiriya unang sentrong sigla and may da and seal nga may ada sun Dr. Bargamento What I get out of it. Man, I remember in here, in here, in here, in here. Right? Then, after all the chichiria, there are two of them. One. 
no? So, Dr. Juan Flavier was the <clears throat> proponent of the Centrong Sigla movement, okay? He popularized the battle cry, let's do it, no? So, let's, tapos DOH, it. So, let's do it. He popularized the programs and projects of the department and injected excitement in the early years of his administration. So, he encouraged participation of non-governmental organizations in the DOH programs and projects. No? So, Oplan Sagip Mata, no? he was the one. Yosi Kadiri, no? Hanmanga, I, I think you would know about it. Wait. Yosi Kadiri. Yosi Kadiri. This one. Diba? I feeling nahabot gud da kini nahabot gud ka mo da hitun diba Pero ati yung mga ida No so he was the one he was the proponent of this so nagkamay ada ni mga nag-inject yan mga exciting uh, mga program so may dahi yung mga mascots no gin 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 injected with the programs no he was also the proponent of the Doctor to the Barrios project or the DTTB. So until now, may dalagyan kita mga Doctor to the Barrio, no? Our DTTBs, no? We have Hataw Fitness Program, no? the Zumba, Pusong Pinoy, and Hospitals as Centers for Wellness Program. However, the internal turmoil following the devolution of the field health services persisted. So... Uh, because of the devolution in 1991, uh, but, but uh, during the term of Dr. Juan Javier, nag-start pala ang devolution. So, when we say devolution, uh, before the devolution, so gad kasi hindi situation in every, in, in, in the whole country, no? All the doctors in the communities or in the municipalities are under the Department of Health. Meaning, if for example, here in here in our regional office, maga hire kami mga doctors, and then we will deploy them to the different municipalities. No, so kung maga naasa ang mga municipio, hindi gahatag han Department of Health ng mga doctors. Okay, also ang mga nurses ng gahatag. No, with the devolution, nagkamaya dahin ah uh, kalugaringon. Uh, liberty and mga local government units not to be under the DOH but still under the supervision of the DOH pero with the devolution here na nag hire han era doctors no so up to what we what we know now right now as the rural health units may ada mga doctors no? but there are still local government units who does who are who does not have these doctors not because not because dire hira nag 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 hire but because wala may nag apply so amo ito it it yan na nga because of uh, Dr. Juan Flavier nakita ini niya uh, nakita niya nga there is a gap because uh, with the devolution nakakaya na to uh, without the devolution and una pa nakakaya Department of Health magkamay din mga doctors tikad to ha mga iba-ibang iba lugar because for example ako nga doctor ga assign ako hintulong nga munisipyo Tolosa Dulag Mayorga no, amo to lang ginihimuhan Department of Health but uh, because of the devolution, uh, every municipality has their uh, right and their privilege to choose and to hire their uh, municipal health officers. But there, were, there are municipal municipalities nga waray talaga. So the solution that uh, Secretary Flavier no, uh, initiated was the Doctor to the Barrios Project, no, or the DTTB. Okay. And then... Also in this uh, in her time, no, nagkamaya dahin thirteen different community processing various uh, financial transactions. Okay, but like uh, Secretary Bingzon, uh, the former Secretary of Health, also Secretary Falavier resigned to run for senatorial seat. No, and uh, we could remember him also as a senator, Senator Juan Flavier. In this time, he was successfully obtained and he chaired the Senate Committee on Social Justice and Senate Committee on Indigenous People. No? So, I mean, 
her his term was from July 1992 to January 1995. Dr. Juan Slavier was really remembered as Makamasa na, doc, na Secretary of Health because he rose from becoming a rural health physician to becoming a Secretary of Health. Okay. Then on 1992, February to June 1992, we have uh, Dr. Antonio Periquit. As Secretary of Health, he had to grapple to the challenges of the immediate emotional and conceptual problems of devolution of health services brought about by the local government code of 1991. No? So during her his his period, no, uh, nagsa start pala talaga ang devolution ng kanan local government code in 1991. So Secretary Periquet's term ended with the change in the national political leadership in 1992 from uh, Cory Aquino to Fidel V. Ramos. Okay. Now. Dr. Alfredo Benzon was the first Secretary of Health under the Restored Democracy, no? under, the doc under President Cory Aquino. So his term was from March 1986 to January 1992. Because during the time of Marcos, Antawag and Secretary of Health was Minister of Health. Okay? So Dr. Alfredo R.A. Benzon was the first Secretary of Health after the... Uh, dictatorship of Marcos. No? So he had the difficult task of reorganizing the Department of Health, restoring its soul and spirit and delivering it through a tense transition. His previous training in business management gave him the proper tools to, ex to execute the crucial role dealt by destiny. No? So in his five years of administration, he carried out the transition successfully and carried the DOH to new heights of energy and achievement. Okay. During his term, we had our FATP program. No, the Field Epidemiology Training Program. This is a program which is up to now no, uh, active by then because there were already up to now, we have 33 batches already of the field epidemiology training program. Now, this is just like a fellowship training. If you are, if you remember, if you can, uh, makikita niyo have medicine, after your medicine, you have your residency, then your residency, your fellowship. No? Now, when you, when you are in the public health, uh, for example, right now, just like me, I am assigned at the Regional Epidemiology Surveillance Unit. I can have the chance to be trained as a fellow in the field epidemiology training program or the FETP. This would be a two-year uh, training program in Manila, and then you will be trained as surveillance. Uh, we will be trained with the surveillance system in the Philippines. No? So currently, my medical officer three, Dr. Ludina Insigne, is the one uh, sent by the, the Department of Health Regional Office for the field epidemiology training program. Dr. Bingson also championed the National Drug Policy Program or the PNPP. No? In addition to programs, there were many other improvements in the DOH system at this time. Okay? So he had initiated the following, among others. We have the control of acute respiratory infections, control of hepatitis B, polio eradication, National AIDS Prevention and Control Program, non-communicable disease programs, no, like the cardiovascular and cancer control programs and the Philippine Health Development Project. Okay. The second half of his term, however, he became controversial when he pushed the generic law amidst opposition from the medical practitioners and drug manufacturers. Now, we are very thankful with Dr. Alfredo Bingson because of this generic law. Ibig sabihin, uh, doctors can get mga public uh, rural health physicians actually should not prescribe those with those with uh, brand names, no? Because uh, there was controversy, there were controversies also with the arrangement between a doctor and the drug manufacturer, di ba? May the mga nahatagin kwartang mga drug manufacturers for for these doctors to prescribe, no? So, syempre, and mga gin 
ang mga tao nga gin tatagan hini nga mga prescription, they are obliged to buy those nga ada di at reseta kay amo laan nakabutang nga brand name, no? So right now, that's the reason why we have the generic law. We we can we only prescribe the generic names, no? We could not diri kita dapat mag prescribe without the generic names. If you are a private physician and then you can pres you prescribe a a brand name, dapat permit hiya may the generic about, no? So that the the person being prescribed to can have the uh, liberty to buy other brands, no? Nga kasha or pasok kaira kaira pasok kaira budget, okay? So. Secretary Bengson resigned to run for a Senate seat but fell short of his goal by a few thousand votes. Uh, so, what are you secretary, unlike uh, Senator Juan Xavier? Right. Now we go to Dr. Jesus Azurin. Dr. Jesus Azurin was a Minister of Health because he was under. Um, Marcos, Fer, uh, Mer, Ferdinand Marcos. So, martial law from July 1981 to February 1986 and he uh, pagiging director of the Minister, uh, Minister of Health, I mean. Minister of Health. Okay. So, as Minister of Health, he launched the nationwide implementation of the primary health care approach in September 1961 and received the first WHO Sasakawa Health Price for for the primary health care. So with Dr. Azurin, primary health care opened the healthcare delivery system to barangay health workers and community health volunteers, stimulating interaction between health center staff and the community that it serves. Okay. Next is we have Dr. Enrique M. Garcia. So her, his term was from July 1979 to June 1981. So he's still a Minister of Health. No? Her, his programs were about the National TB Control Program. And then he improved the manpower development and upgraded residency training. Upgraded residency training. No? Among, uh, uh, training centers, med original training centers. No? Immunization began to provide one year round basis instead of only six biannually. And Praziquantel, which was a new drug during that time, provided a breakthrough in the treatment of possible eradication of cystosomiasis. During her ter his term, also, Magnagamayada uh, in International Development Association, which involved civil works, logistics, IEC, and activities in family planning health and nutrition, and there was also the control of diarrheal disease or the CDD program, which was lost, uh, launched during his term. Until now, we still have this control of diarrheal disease program. Okay. Minister uh, Dr. Enrique Garcia became ill during his term and died soon after his official retirement. So, retired here, not because of his age, but uh, because of his illness, and then after that, he died. We go to uh, Dr. Clemente Gatmaitan. No? Fra, he was the department secretary from December 1971 to July 1979. So eight years. No? So Dr. Amadeo Gatmaitan, uh, Dr. Clemente Gatmaitan, I mean, rose from the ranks. He first joined the DOH in 1930 as a physician in the Negros Occidental Provincial Office. Uh, he became president of the sanitary division in Bulacan from 1932 to 1934, and he was a medical officer in the Bureau of Health, chief of the section of school health supervision, and became undersecretary of health for medical services in 1962, and became acting secretary of health in December 1971, and was appointed secretary only in January 1973. With a total duration of eight years, his administration was the longest uninterrupted term of a Secretary of Health. Okay. 
1976, the Rural Health Practice Program, which fielded new medical and nursing graduates for, to the rural areas for three to six months, was implemented. Okay. Then we have the field implementation of the Medicare Act of 1969 and the Institute of Health Sciences in Tacloban was because of Dr. Gatmaitan. So right now, this Institute of Health Sciences is our uh, University of the Philippines, uh, UPSHSIS. Okay. This term also marked the construction of the huge medical centers in Metro Manila. We have the Heart Center for Asia, the Lung Center of the Philippines, and the Philippine Children's Medical Center, or the PCMC. So all of which were popularly referred to as somebody's disease palaces. So for example, and may mga problem han heart, nga to heart center, and may problem sa lungs, nga to lungs, a lung center. Okay. Now, Okay, we have Dr. Amadeo H. Cruz, who, who had his uh, term on August 1968 to 1971. Then Dr. Manuel Cuenco, Dr. Floro Dabu, Dr. Francisco Duque, the father no, of Francisco Duque III. No, let's go to him. Okay, so Dr. Francisco Duque Jr. <clears throat> was a resident of Pangasinan. No, so. He was, he supported the Philippine Medical Association. He laid down the groundwork for his vision of social health insurance for Filipinos. And uh, wait lang, may dala nag message, may dala nag tawag ha? Di may. Okay, so during Dr. Francisco Duque's Jr.'s term as Secretary of Health, uh, there was he was challenged by an epidemic, uh, the cholera virus, known as the El Tor, uh, that uh, it threatened no uh, nationwide. So also with her with his term, he paved way for the Philippine Medical Care Plan, which became a Senate Bill Number Seven Seven Three. And this was signed by President Ferdinand Marcos into law as Republic Act 6111, known as the Philippine Medical Care Act of 1969. It was also during his term <coughs> sorry, that there was a tremendous progress in the food and pharmaceutical industry. He created the Subcommittee on Food and Drugs to recommend to Congress to enact a law that would ensure the safety, purity, and quality of foods, drugs, and cosmetics being made available to the public. No? So there was Republic Act number 37220, known as the Food, Drugs, and Cosmetic Act, which was passed into a law. The Food and Drug Administration was eventually created to carry out the provisions of the law. So because of the recommendation of Dr. Francisco Duque Jr., no, the Food and Drug Administration, he resigned as Secretary of Health to run for Governor of Pangasinan. Okay, before him is Dr. Ipilio Valencia and Dr. Paulino Garcia. Uh, then we have Dr. Juan Salcedo and Dr. Villarama. Now we go to the last na lang. Uh, we have Dr. Jose Fabella. No? He was the first secretary and executive officer of the Public Welfare Board. So if you could uh, um, Remember right now, we have the Fabella na hospital, no, kung hain damo at 
uh, OB cases. No? So, Dr. Jose Fabella was the first secretary and executive officer of the Public Welfare Board from 1914 to 1921. So, he was a secretary of health from January 1941 to 1945. No? He was regarded as the foremost. Uh, um, exponent of maternity and child health as well as social work in the country during his time. Now, as public welfare commissioner, he started the coordination and regulation of various welfare services, including the operation of periculture centers. Now, he started the Child Health Day and the Health Baby Contest and Clean Up Week. His administration as Secretary of Health and Public Welfare was abruptly interrupted because of an illness and he spent a life of retirement in his home. He died on January 16, 1945. So he championed for maternity and child health. The reason why we have our Fabella, Jose Fabella Memorial Medical Center. No? So I think it's already 8-11. No. So please log into that website so that you could review those secretaries. So, achievements during their administration. And then, uh, we have not yet finished, so we will be meeting next week. Uh, we will, I will be discussing to you about um, the public health situation in the Philippines, and we will be having an activity. So, can you, uh, what's the most, a convenient way for you to have your groupings. Zoe? Hello? You have your groupings already? We have five groups in PIM. We have five groups. Yes. Okay, sige. Sige, amo na lang at gamitin for next meeting. We will be having an activity next meeting. Okay. Just showing to you videos and then we will be discussing about public health system in the Philippines and then you will be discussing it by group and then you'll be presenting it by group also. Okay? Okay. Sige. So I think that would be all for today. No? As you could see, no, there is a long list of Department of Health secretaries and uh, they have their own um hallmarks no they have their own uh, mga programs no so yun please uh go into that website so that you would know the details and then that that may be included in the exams so yun kita mo natin okay see ya good morning everyone and thank you for listening thank you doc thank you doc thank you doc Thank you, Doc. Thank you.